Hey, welcome back. I uh, just wanted to let you know 10 ways that you can mess up your VA disability claims. Hang on tight, we'll get right into it. Hey everybody, Steve here, welcome back. Um, today we're gonna talk about 10 ways that you can fail at entering your VA disability claim. And I've got them up on the screen right here, so I'm gonna look up over here. I don't wanna miss anything here because these are 10 very important things um, that you need to be concerned with uh, and, and watch out for these pitfalls so that when you're filing your VA disability claims, you don't get caught up in any of this junk. <clears throat> so number 10, we're gonna kick off, is gonna be not keeping detailed records. I can't, I can't say this enough. Um, I've been through this process. I have made every one of these mistakes myself. So I'm trying to help you out so you don't have to go through the pain that I went through. Not keeping detailed records is huge. If you've moved a lot, if you've changed doctors a lot, if you've been seen for all these conditions that you think are related to your service and you can prove they're related to your service, but your diagnosis was eight years ago, 10 years ago, and you don't even remember which doctor you went to. I've been through a lot of chiropractors, so I know exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, you're going to have a problem. You need to make sure that you have a up-to-date current diagnosis and that you're keeping detailed records of everything that is going on with this. If it's lower back pain, you need to keep a detailed record of what is that back pain prohibiting you from doing? Have you lost time at work? Have you missed out on family events? Have you, you know, not been able to do things? Have you missed out on playing with your kids, etc.? All those things are very, very important. So very comprehensive list and record of your symptoms, all your appointments, and any of the time that you've missed with family, friends, or work in general. <clears throat> One of the other ways that you can help with this is you can get buddy statements. So people that you served with <clears throat> that maybe can attribute or can contribute to the fact that you have this issue, this problem, this lower back, this, you know, snoring, let's say sleep apnea and insomnia. You have sleep apnea and insomnia. And I don't know about you, but when I was in the service, everybody around me knew when I was snoring and when I had sleep apnea because I'd stop breathing and they'd have to punch me in the arm or you know, sit there worried that I wasn't gonna wake up. So I get statements from all those buddies that I serve next to. That helps a whole lot. Next thing is organize all of your records. Put them in the correct order. Put them in that order. That timeline needs to be solid. Without any of that good timeline being there, you're probably not going to be very happy with how many times you have to go back and reprove or add supplementals or appeal any of your disability claims. <clears throat> Number nine, overlooking mental health conditions. Veterans hate to admit that they need help with their mental health. We're horrible at that because we were taught you're tough. You're going to move forward. You know, quit your whining. Here's two, you know, here's two Advil. Take them, put your arm back on, and go back to work. Uh, the problem is, is that <clears throat> if you don't seek help for it and you can't be attributed to your service, time and service, uh, whether it's in theater, out of theater, anything, um, this is especially true with, with MST. So if you're, you know, if you're unfortunately a victim of military sexual trauma, you need to make sure that you are getting help for mental health, not only for your disability claim, but dang it, it's gonna help you in your everyday life. I can tell you that's true. Check out my channel. You'll see I did an entire series on my PTSD treatments. So I hated getting after it. I didn't wanna go get treated for it. I didn't believe it was PTSD. I didn't believe I was worthy. Didn't believe anybody gave a crap. And finally, I went and got it done way too many years past when I should have. Um, document all of your symptoms with mental health. Make sure that you keep a journal. Anything that triggers you, anything that, you know, spins you off into a world of ticked off or a world of, you know, crap that's a bad memory, 
Um, again, for me, for anybody who's familiar with the channel, aircraft, if I hear aircraft too low next to my house, I start getting the sweats. I got to go outside. I got to figure out what's going on with it. It really does trigger me. So I've got that going. <clears throat> and then for your mental health conditions, you have to establish a very clear link to your military service or will not be approved. So keep that in mind. Number eight, <clears throat> not appealing your denials properly. Be timely in your appeals. If you, if you look at the letter that you get from the VA, it'll say, here's positive things that attributed to your claim, and here's the reasons why we didn't approve your claim. <clears throat> and in those reasons of why they didn't approve your claim, you're going to see all the things that you need to go get clarification on. So take all those things. Review that denial reason. What did they say was, okay, I've got a um, <clears throat> diagnosis. I've got a diagnosis for PTSD. Great. Could not connect it to your service. No, no event. Well, I know what the event was. Why don't I go back and look, see if I can find documentation of the event, look through my service record, do all of that. Boom. Now I've got it, right? <clears throat> now, sometimes your appeals are still going to get denied. In that case, I'm going to say this, probably going to do a whole video on it here in the near future. Seek out a veteran's law firm. Now, before you do it, if you want to wait and check out my video that's going to come out in a few weeks or maybe in a week or two, I don't know. It depends on when I get around recording it. But if you want to wait and see the ins and outs, things that are commonly misassociated with veteran law firms, like, man, they're going to take all my money and this and that. Man, wait till that video comes out. But if you get stuck, you need legal help. I'm getting legal help. So I know, I know if I need it after doing claims for several years that, you know, others are going to need it as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've got some respiratory stuff still going. <clears throat> Mistake number seven. <sighs> Lacking a nexus letter. Un just re complete disregard for the importance of a nexus letter. A nexus letter is a letter from a medical professional that says, I have seen this person for this diagnosis. These are their symptoms. And then they're going to tell you one of two things. <clears throat> it is less than likely that it was connected to their service, which is bad news for you. Or it is at least as likely as not connected to their military service. Those are the words you're looking for. That's what you need that Nexus letter to do. It's going to provide that link. It's going to be from a medical professional and it needs to be in a quality format. This is not something that every doctor will do. Ask your civilian doctors if you have a civilian doctor to do this for you. VA doctors probably more hesitant to do this since their paycheck comes from the VA. Let's just be honest. <clears throat> so look for them from individual or independent medical experts or from practicing physicians. However, you can get to them. There's plenty of channels on YouTube that share with you different, you know, different firms that can help you get those Nexus letters and what the costs are associated with them. Number six, <clears throat> underestimating the importance of your medical evidence. If you have evidence that you sneezed and couldn't stop sneezing for five days after you went to the Gulf, include that in your rhinitis and your sinusitis claims. I mean, you've got to get very comprehensive with these medical records. Just like number 10 said, you have got to get extremely detailed with this. Get statements from current family, friends, coworkers who've seen this condition, who've witnessed it firsthand. Get an independent medical opinion. We just talked about that. Get you a nexus letter and keep good, solid records. Don't ever underestimate the importance of that medical evidence. <clears throat> Mistake number five, not seeking professional assistance. <laughs> um, try and go it alone. Let me know how it works out. You'll invest a lot of time, a lot of energy into doing something that you could have had a whole lot of help with for little or no cost to you. So <clears throat> get, 
get professional assistance. If you're not sure how this works, go find a VSO. I'm not a huge fan of VSOs, but there are good VSOs out there. I happen to know a few very good veteran service officers VSO. Um, otherwise, go get a law firm, get legal representation, um, run, have them run through the appeals process. They know what they're doing. So get professional assistance if you're not getting the results that you want. Number four, mistake number four, ignoring secondary service connections. Um, I don't want to get into all the details of what a secondary service connection is, but if <clears throat> you have a bulging disc in your back and it causes radiculopathy, which is the constant you know, radiation and of your pain going through your body, and you're not claiming both of those, then you're missing out. So make sure you understand your secondary conditions. Um, headaches, PTSD, they go together hand in hand. Uh, there's a lot of ways that you can connect these things together. There's a lot of resources on the internet to figure this out. Again, try and get help where you can. Um, you have to understand your secondary condition. Uh, secondary condition is something that is caused or aggravated by a service-connected disability. If you have a service-connected disability for 10% for tinnitus, and that tinnitus drives you mad or you can't sleep at night, you need to find a way to connect those two. I've got insomnia, and my insomnia is triggered by my tinnitus, which keeps me up because my ears ring all the time. I mean, it's very, it's very straightforward, but it takes some time to get used to writing the right statements. Um, evidence, always get your evidence to connect the two together. Look for medical journals. Medical journals state tinnitus can keep you awake at night because you hear it the whole time and cause insomnia. I mean, there's medical journals out there that have that in it. All right, number three, <clears throat> not filing, wait a minute, not filing for secondary conditions. Now that you've known that you have a secondary connection, a secondary service connection, now you have to file for that. You have to file for that condition. Don't pass that up. You're, you're missing out. Again, I've got tinnitus at 10%. Great. Um, but I've also got insomnia and I can't sleep because of this. You could be missing out on 30, 50, 70% disability by not filing for that secondary condition. Get the nexus, get your evidence, get your timeline, get the connection between the two, the service event, the whole nine yards, put it all together get it out there and get yourself some disability that you've earned. Number two is filling out your forms incorrectly. I can tell you that I have done this oh, more times than I want to admit, quite honestly. So um, fill your forms out completely, fill them out correctly. This goes also hand in hand with find professional help. Veteran service officers are trained in how to fill these claims out. Now, you may have to be extremely uh, verbal with them and extremely detailed with them so that they can help claim that, put that claim in for you, but get help if you can't figure these forms out on your own. <clears throat> the number one mistake people are making, number one way to screw up your VA disability claim, by waiting. If you wait too long, you're not only missing out on potential income from VA disability, you're missing out on your potential ability to get health care from the VA for a specific condition, and you really could possibly miss out on getting any kind of disability for specific conditions. There are conditions that require you to file within one year of being discharged from service. Now, I didn't start filing until well past that, so I missed all of those. That's personal experience right there. So that's the number one mistake that's made when filing or when you're trying to get VA disability. I'm gonna throw one bonus in there. And this bonus is something that I have seen multiple times. And I wanna make sure that it's very, very clear. Go find the DBQs, the Disability Benefits Questionnaires. Read them. Look at them from a doctor's standpoint. Look at them and check mark them and they come in PDF format. You can go see exactly what you're gonna be asked 
in your CMP exam and what you need to prove in order to get disability. It'll help you write your claims. It'll help you get your buddy statements. It'll help you develop your nexus better. It'll tell you what you need to really go get and focus on for your medical records. And then you put all that together, get it to a professional or work really hard and get it you know, filed in with your claim, then you're in great shape. That's your bonus. I hope this all helps. If it does, smash that like button. Uh, give me a subscribe. Bang that bell so that you can subscribe and get more of these videos. I'm going to start trying to release these at least twice a week and see where we go from there. Thanks, y'all. Take care.